I wanted to share my story about building a real-time trading system with HTML5. So why, why do this in the first place? For me, the pitch was speed and efficiency. We could deliver an app faster than our competitors. We can be more responsive to customer feedback. We can iterate and take the time to get it right, not by pulling and sampling our users, but by actually delivering them software. And by far, HTML5 is the most productive technology that I've used in my career. So the reasons for that are, uh, number one, it allows us to focus on product instead of infrastructure. You have guys like Adam here, we are adopters of React, who it's their job to just focus on building the framework and infrastructure that powers these products. And so when I look at assembling a dev team and delivering value to the business, we have fewer engineers, there's less back and forth, and we're not wasting our time building components that are readily available on open source sites. Next one. Deploys are dead simple. When you deploy something using HTML, it's, it's a push to, to your server, and then clients is effectively download the rest of the app. Uh, but beyond that, it's also about the speed at which you can go through deploys. GitHub, uh, Travis, continuous integration, um, Ansible, Docker, all these things have these canned scripts that you can use to push out to your clients faster than if you're going to manage the whole process yourself. And then finally, like, and, and this is the key point, desktop parity. Anyone who tries to build a trading app in a browser will quickly discover that it does not work. Traders, if you've ever seen a, a trader's desktop, you get hundreds of open tabs, windows, documents. Everything about it is just distraction. So what you need is something that can get in their face, command attention, and then you deliver a product that leads them to entering an order and generating a trade. So I want to take you through the process that I think about when I say, how do we organize our trading infrastructure? And it comes down to three things. Number one, messaging. I heard some WebSocket people or questions up here. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit. The second thing, view rendering. You have this data from the server. How do you actually get it onto the screen? And what are the ways that you can do it in a maintainable fashion? And then number three, state management. You have messages flying in from the back end in a streaming fashion. You have the view responding or reacting to these events that are unsolicited from the user. And what happens if your connection drops? How do you resynchronize your data? How do you know that the client's actually clicking on an order or a, a bid or an offer to lift and that they're actually going to get the expected result? So state management does that for us. What it does is it keeps everything in sync. Our strategy in delivering this product was not to build it ourselves. So what we used is an opinionated platform called Meteor. So what Meteor gives you is essentially a kit for designing these applications. Uh, you have to accept some of their decisions, but the benefit is, is that you can do things faster. So I want to talk about messaging. For building a trading application, two sort of, I say, choreographies you need to implement. You have request response, which is I ask for data and I get an immediate response in reply. And then there's pub sub, which is I want to subscribe to updates. I don't know when they're going to happen, but I need to be able to deal with these unsolicited events. The way that you do this is through WebSockets. So up here, these are the reasons why you think you don't want to use WebSockets it's not supported by IE. Or you still have to implement something on the server. Or there's no application level protocol. For that, we use Meteor. In our experience of launching our platform, the most unforeseen, difficult problem is this thing called a proxy. And it's something totally outside of your control. No team of engineers can fight it, right? And why is this? Well, the reason is, is because every single client, especially financial institutions, your companies that you all work for, have these routers that sit at the edge of their networks that intercept all web traffic. And while proxies serve a very important function for security and compliance, they break web sockets. When you build a WPF trading application and you go and install somewhere, 
every network engineer knows that you don't need to funnel that through the proxy because it's TCP traffic, it's okay. But web traffic is something different. We put everything through the proxy there. So it's just one of those things that if anyone's thinking about launching a system using WebSockets or deploying it, um, while it's gonna work great inside your development environment, the minute that you go to the real world, uh, it's probably going to break. And the best way, the only way to mitigate it is with a bypass. And I highly recommend you build a tool that can just test the connection without any login that says, hey, is this WebSockets good or bad? And that will tell you pretty much if they configured your application correctly. Presentation to me is when you get all this data, how do you present it to the user? And how do you make the experience as seamless as possible? When we're building our trading app, we want everything to run smoothly. We don't want uh, bottlenecks or things to feel laggy or slow. And anyone who's dealt with these types of systems knows that the bandwidth of like market data quotes, updates, there are 10,000 bonds that we trade on our platform. You have to give all that information to the user. And if you just try to send it down the channel, it's gonna freeze their browser and it's really gonna mess with their experience. So here are the four tips that I can give you, the strategies that we use essentially to mitigate these problems. So number one, we virtualize everything as much as we can. The reason why we deviated from Meteor's default view rendering solution and we adopted React is because React has by far the highest performant, from what I can tell, uh, virtualization engine on the market today, right? Uh, and the way it works is like this. It's, it's recognizing that CPU is the user's most precious resource on the trading client. So when you wanna push a change and you wanna redraw a browser window, what React does is it compares the before and the after and it runs an algorithm in the browser essentially to figure out what is that one change that I can make that's minimally disruptive to having to redraw the whole site. So use that wherever possible. Next. Uh, Client-side caching. Things that are consistently looking up, you want to store. You want to use local storage. You want to use web storage. CSS3 hardware acceleration. When I see people doing Java or jQuery animate or trying to move something across the screen, what they're doing is they're essentially robbing the user's computer of doing important processing work like handling market data quotes or updating the views that they have on screen. So instead, what we wanna do is learn how to use CSS3 3D transforms. And then finally, you know, if all else fails, you have to recognize that we're all human. And at the end of the day, when you're building a trading interface, humans can only consume so much data at a time. So throttle, debounce, these aren't problems just with HTML5, anybody who's built a trading application will have had the same experience. And the solutions are all the same, but these are the specific techniques that we used when we designed our app. Next. When you build these things, it really isn't the technology that you're managing, it's the people. Just from my experience, there have been certain things that I've been able to do or witness or see that I feel have allowed us to be so productive and really cut down on the time that it takes for us to deliver and maintain our trading application. So I call these management insights. The first one is establish boundaries. When you have a team and they're listening to every single blog update, they're reading Reddit and Hacker News, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And I think there's a tendency for people to want to just absorb everything. I think what's really helpful for us is setting guidelines about what is in play and what's out of play. So for us, Meteor, we made a decision to stick with that framework. We wanted to be a part of that ecosystem, really not because we felt that it was the best, but because it was the most maintainable. So those are the types of guidelines. But then we start to branch out a little bit. We took the React plugin. Now we're looking at getting off of uh, Mongo and Mini Mongo and going on to GraphQL. So there's, there's places, but we're doing it in sort of a targeted, uh, planned effort. Next. Uh, drive business value. Don't put in like a fancy scrolling animation if it's not gonna get users to put in more orders. 
or don't distract the user with flashing colors if it doesn't have a specific intent. Coerce, but don't contain. This is really more about encourage people to take risks and allow yourself to be surprised with the results. One example that we had was there was an engineer on my team and I told him a very specific way how I wanted him to design a new React component. And what he ended up doing was not using the approach that I had suggested, which is make a test, run it over and over so you can get the system in the state, then work on it within the browser. But he actually built a totally separate site. It was kind of like an artboard or like a storyboard. And you can click through the components and use it totally independent of the actual application. And now this is something that drives all of our UI development when we go forward. So it's just one of those small antidotes that you never know what you're gonna get. But it was really driven by the fact of, hey, I think that I have a solution here. He came up with a better one. We absorbed that onto our team. And that goes to my last point, which is learn how to eat crow. The message I'm gonna leave you all with is this stuff is so rapidly changing. Everything I've said here is gonna be obsolete six months from now, probably. I mean, like maybe not the principles, but the technologies. We're gonna be moving on to this new stack. We're looking at Apollo, if you've ever heard of that. Um, it's by the Meteor team, but it's about adopting GraphQL and uh, Redux, I think, and, and trying to integrate that. Um, but the point is, is that if you really just leverage the community and you don't fight it, then I think that you can have tremendous value, you can deliver your product quicker, and at real time trading. Thank, Thank you. you.